Prepare your taste buds as we take you into the world of Fish and Stars. This is the XP Today. Hello and welcome to DXB Today. Tonight we embark on a tantalizing journey in the realm of Michelin star dining as we celebrate the newly added restaurants right here in Dubai. Oh, Michelin Awards, esteemed culinary institutions that intertwine innovation and tradition to create unforgettable dining experiences. Join us as we uncover the secrets behind the stars and delve into the rigorous evaluation process. Also, on today's show, we are having an early celebration for International Burger Day that actually falls this weekend on the 28th of May. Plus, we're going to give you front row access to the latest movies at the cinema. Mm -hmm. So guys, what was the last movie you watched at the cinema? Okay, I feel like I'm going to be heavily judged for this, but oh I spoke no. about this on my Instagram story. I went to go see Fast X in, <laughs> in cinema. I'm like an avid Fast and Furious series yeah. fan. You watched all of them? All of them. Oh, wow. I'm obsessed. Now, I know it's not the greatest cinematic pieces ever, but I feel like it's just feel good. It's got yeah. a good message. It's just an easy watch. And it's one of those things that you'd want to watch in the cinema because of all yeah. the action and exactly. the sounds. Exactly, the sound and everything. The whole experience of the cinema is just great. For but me, I it was The Little Mermaid, by the way. Oh, wow. Oh, how it just came out. How was it? Oh, well. All I have to say is don't compare it to the cartoon because I think a okay. lot of people would keep comparing that. So there are a lot of scenes that are straight from the animated uh, version yeah. and there are some new ones as well that'll make you think, oh, I didn't know this. And it's okay. just a nice touch. Of course, you had Lin-Manuel Miranda to thank for a lot of these yeah. new songs. Yeah. Wow. Really, I'm going to watch it next week and I, I watched Air yesterday and it nice. was like one of these movies that you feel good after watching it. Really? So it's really good to watch I it. I mean, we spoke about it off air. We also go to the cinema for the food. Yeah, exactly. of course. <laughs> We're going to be talking very much about the food today and our guest co-host is, of course, an expert in all things fine dining and hospitality right here in the city. So let's find out who it is. Hey, it's Dan here and I'm looking forward to having some great food chat. Thank you so much, Dan. Looking forward to having him right here next to us. Dan is a regional and international food expert and will be joining us right here in the studio. But before he does, let's take a look at the Michelin event that took place last week where 17 new restaurants were given the prestigious awards. Dan was at the event, actually seated right next to me, rubbing shoulders with the culinary greats. So let's check it out. Hi there, I'm super excited to be here today at the Royal Atlantis in Dubai for the second ever Michelin Award Ceremony for Dubai. Today I'm going to be speaking to some of the chefs who have earned their coveted plaques. The big day is something that we've been waiting for since last year. So the announcement of 69 Michelin restaurants was something massive for us. It was the first year. Uh, 11 stars were handed out, two two-star restaurants, so it was amazing. Then you've got Bib Gourmand, which again, for a lot of people, they don't assume to find affordable eateries in Dubai. So the fact that Bib Gourmand started to list so many options and variety for, for people to go out and experience and really enjoy the, 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 the selection, the wide variety that Dubai has to offer, something that we're very, very proud of. So today, we want to see how we build on that. So I'm here with the Himanshu from Tristan Studio that's just picked up the accolade of two Michelin stars. How does it feel? It's, uh, I think I'll take some time to process it. It's uh, hard to imagine, uh, but super proud of everyone in the group. Uh, uh, as I was saying on the stage that we started with one restaurant in 2014, never knew that we'd come so far. I'm feeling very blessed to receive this award as a Young Chef of the Year 2023. And this is going to boost me in my work. And uh, this uh, award, I'll dedicate this award to my family. We are going to s uh, serve the same uh, gratitude towards the guest, whatever we are doing. Thank you er everyone who believe Hakkasan, who believe me. Thank you my whole team that who we have been working for the whole years so of working together. It's really, it's really that I would like to say appreciate for everything that what we've been doing. It feels crazy. It, it feels insane. Like, I don't know. 
I think when when they called our name, the best the best feeling initially was like, oh my god, the dread is over, because like you're sitting there and it's like they're seeing the recommended restaurants list, they're seeing this, they're seeing that, and you're fixated like I want to start, please, I want to start, you know. <laughs> and then they say the name. The first thing is like you have this weight lifted off your shoulders, and then so now I'm still in the processing phase. I mean, listen, we've been working really hard. This is almost everything that we do. I spend more than half my time thinking about this and bringing the team together. Obviously, it's a team effort, so it takes everyone pulling together, whether it's kitchen, front of the house, obviously, you know, the beverage team, guest relations. So it is really a, a collective effort. In Dubai, we've been blessed with a, a private-public sector relationship that really works so well in tandem that the private sector really took this on board and they knew the importance of having this thing together. So for us, all the hard work, all the effort, everything that they've done from the suppliers to the staff that work at those restaurants, to the investors, to the chefs, everyone working at every aspect of the service that's finally delivered to you on your plate is something that we wanted to work with a partner like Michelin, bring them here so that they can recognize all of those efforts. Thank you so much. You feel great. I mean, it was great last year. Uh, today is great as well. We are thriving for more indeed. So, of course, we will uh, work harder and uh, make sure we uh, reach new heights. We've just received, we've been awarded with one Michelin star. So, um, it's a, an incredible achievement. Uh, we feel very proud and very honored. Uh, and thank you, Michelin, uh, for, our, for recognizing our work. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing achievement. We've been open for, this is our third month now. So, uh, to bring Dinner by Heston to Dubai um, in partnership with Atlantis the Royal, um, means a great deal to us um, and it's, uh, it's a great achievement. We feel very proud, we're very proud to be in Dubai. I mean, I think we're just going to continue doing what we're doing right now um, and of course take all the comments that have come in, in our path and try and work harder and better ourselves and uh, just wish for positive uh, stars. Yes, of course, who wouldn't mind two stars, or perhaps three, but for now we are happy with what we have in our hand but we'll definitely strive to work harder. Well, this is what Dubai does best, right? And we always look at what we did last time around and we try to make sure that we're building a, a, a forward and ahead and, and on top of that as well. So for us, I have no, um, nothing but the positive things to think about it. And I can only say that with the partners that we have, I am sure that we can top this year on year. Well, what a day it's been here today. Big thanks to everybody who's spoken to me today and big, big congratulations to all the winners and everybody who's out there making Dubai proud. Oh, we've got a lot more restaurants that's gonna add in our must-eat list now in Dubai. And I know you were both there at the event. Welcome, Dan. Thank you for joining us here at it's DXP today. So tell us about this event that you and Nimi were just at. Yeah, we uh, got to visit the Michelin Gala event, which was rather exciting, wasn't it? No, I mean, not together. Let's not, not together. give oh, no, we did the get sat next to each <laughs> other. We got sat next to each other, but I mean, it was fascinating from the press conference all the way through to the gala dinner in the evening, and I saw you enjoying all the all this amazing appetizers going around. I mean, you really are a foodie, Dan, and what I love about you is you kind of just found your passion for it. You're not so to say, I guess, a professional in it, oh. would you say? So can you tell me how your food journey started? So I'm just fortunate enough to have a job where I work abroad a lot. Mm. So I get to go to some amazing culinary cities like Melbourne, like Sydney, Singapore, London, New York. And it's just always been a passion of mine. So my, um, my growing up um, didn't consist of eating much special food because my mum eats really bland food mm -hmm. and my dad's celiac, so he can barely eat anything anyway. So I think when I grew up a little bit and started earning my own money and I could actually go out and go to restaurants, it just opened up my world to what is out there. So it's just been a constant journey for the last probably 20 years now where just discovering new things and trying new flavours and cuisines. And yeah, it's, wow. uh, it's what a, a job journey. to have. Yeah, the quite dream. exciting. Yeah. I just wanted to, because they said there are 17 new restaurants that won uh, during the event uh, that you guys went to. Do you think that's going to be pushing the restaurants here to make better food, better ambience for the people, for them to win a Michelin star? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the way the culinary scene over, over here in Dubai has changed over mm -hmm. the past five years has just been extraordinary. Um, I think, yeah, with Michelin coming, World's 50 Best coming, and Goat and Meal coming, um, it's just made everybody really, really step it up yeah. and it brings such a um, large bit of marketing to, to win these coveted awards. It's just 
yeah, everyone's just kind of battling to be the next yeah, one star, the next one. And <laughs> who's going to be the first three star in Dubai yeah, as well? So it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really, really exciting. Mm, as we saw from the, from that moment, I mean, you got to speak to so many chefs. You got to really be in amongst them. I mean, even for the chefs who have a one star, I mean, to even get a good, just step up to a two star, the, the amount of work that is put into yeah. this. But you know what's so interesting is the history and the story of the Michelin Guide. You know a bit about that. Could you share yeah. us? With so, yeah, so it was, I think it was started in about 1890-something. It was ages ago. So, so when uh, it was for people who were exploring different cities and towns to, to basically, as a guide to where they should kind of be driving to or where they should be, should be traveling to, to, to check out these restaurants. So it was mainly at mes yeah, restaurants and, and hotels. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so you could kind of go to a different city and you'd just be able to open the guide and go to the best places. And, yeah, mm. it, was, it was started that and then it's just evolved and obviously in the digital era now it's, it's all online and I use it as my Bible. So whenever mm. I travel, it's the first thing that I look yes. at <laughs> when I'm booking a restaurant. So mm. it's, it's, it's evolved fantastically. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It started off as a tyre company, right. as we know Michelin yes, exactly. as, and yeah. that's how it kind of developed. Um, I mean, so many big wins of the night as yeah. well. Can you tell us, you know, who was a who was not a surprise to you whatsoever that they went and got a, got a Michelin star or maintained it? So Avatar was one of the restaurants that I thought should have won a star last year. Mm -hmm. So it's a vegetarian Indian concept, mm -hmm. um, and it's just amazing. Like the the dish, the, the plating, sorry, not the dishing, um, <laughs> is absolutely just stunning mm. like i can't describe like how beautiful it is and there's such a nice ambience to the restaurant um it's really well priced um but it was also amazing to see uh Treston studio get to two stars um fantastic fantastic restaurant um himanshu is one of the most passionate people that I've ever had the pleasure to meet. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a few disappointing shocks as well. It was a shame not to see Oceano upgraded because what Gregoire's doing, I think, is really up there on the world stage. Mm -hmm. um, but it was amazing for Moonrise as well. He's such a young chef, is Solomon, and for him to step up from being in the guide last year to now winning his first Michelin star, I think he's only about 26, 27, and it's just yeah. the, the world is his oyster, and he's going to be definitely one of those who'll be pushing for two stars mm. next year. He's a third culture kid right here in Dubai, born and bred, so for him it was an absolute first, and it's great for the local local community to really get behind him, so it was absolutely amazing. I mean, we you can, can see, see him right now doing his thing. I mean, I'm not sure what he's doing, I'll be honest, but <laughs> it, it's important. It's I mean, fancy. It, it does, <laughs> and it's so, so well-deserved, uh, so yeah. I mean, such a great night we had. But you yeah. mentioned something about digital. Here's a question. I just want to pick your brain on this. With everyone uh, with a social media platform right now giving their reviews, giving mm -hmm. their ratings, why is the Michelin star still so relevant when there are so many people giving their thoughts on, yeah. uh, on restaurants? I think sort of food influences, there's always going to be a little bit of... It's, it's difficult to explain. So what happens is, is a lot of restaurants will invite you to go there. Right. And PR companies will invite you to go there. So some people are not as honest as they might want to be just because they right. don't want to upset a PR company. But I think with me it's a little bit different because I don't really, I'll just be honest, like I'm, I'm not really doing things with any ulterior motive. I just go and say how it is. And I think that's how my platform's developed and I've been allowed a few exciting opportunities because they like the honesty and I think that's the thing about Michelin nobody knows who the inspectors are mm -hmm. so they go to these restaurants and no one knows that they're going to be there and these are real real food experts so you, you tend to get a really kind of like balanced opinion we're going to take a short break but after that we're going to be with a celebrity chef who is no stranger to Michelin stars joining us here in the studio don't go anywhere Welcome back to the show. Now, in the world of gastronomy, few names evoke the same level of culinary excellence and artistry as our guest today. Renowned as a visionary chef and gastronomic innovator, please welcome Chef Jason Atherton. Jason, welcome to the Thank show. You Thank you so much me. for being here. We are so, so honoured. Um, Jason, I would love to know where it all started for you because we'll get to where you are now, which is astounding. But how did your passion and love for the culinary art start? I was just adamant from the age of about 12, 13, I just really wanted to be a chef, you know. Yeah. Um, I remember saying to my mum, we have, we'd have no culinary prowess in our family whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Make that quite clear, I don't have this beautiful story of a, a young Italian family <laughs> of rolling pasta with Nonna, it's none of that. We are 
the basic of all northern families. But I just really wanted to be a chef. I mean, my mum worked at a, um, so we call them guest house, like a small hotel, six, seven bedrooms. So I used to help wash up, that type of stuff. And then um, 16, once I was allowed to, well, I wasn't really allowed, I just ran off to London and, and then the rest is history, really. Wow. I mean, you say the rest is history, <laughs> but there is a lot of history. I mean, you've achieved so, yes. so much uh, with mm. what you do. City Social, I mean, doing phenomenal things. What was the inspiration behind it? Well, when we opened the original City Social in London, it was um, halfway up Tower 42 in the city, beautiful views. So I've never really wanted to sort of do anything like that ever again. And then when we got the opportunity to come back to Dubai and launch something here at the top of Grosvenor House mm -hmm. in the marina, um, you know, we're 42, 43 floors up with that amazing view. And Dubai has just become this insane city, right, where the views are just in incredible. Yeah. So I said, right, this has to be City Social Dubai. Mm -hmm. And that was really the starting of everything two years ago. Wow. So. Wow. Pollen Social House, you just celebrated 12 years. Yes. Which is great. And you also got a Michelin star <laughs> for this year as well. For yeah, the we've, 2023. We've had it for every year for 12 yes. years. Wow. wow yeah. That's amazing. Can you please tell us more about the concept behind So it's, it, it's, it's, you know, a gastronomic restaurant, but it, but it sort of caters, so it doesn't just do tasting menus. Yeah. It also does free courses. So we, we enable people to put there, we, we, we call it sort of fine dining for beginners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can put your foot in there and not have to be overawed by 15 course menus and because yeah. it can be quite intimidating fine yes, dining, right? <laughs> for people who've never been in it before when you spent your whole life in it you don't really understand why people get intimidated mm -hmm. but it actually can be quite intimidating to sit there and not know you know why a wine goes with this and that type of stuff so we what we would do is just do three courses all the way up to 12 courses and then okay. that's down to you right so that's the concept wow really. lush so I was lucky enough to go to City Social a couple of weeks ago and had an amazing steak. It was like, like that. It was, it, was, it was brilliant. So where are you wanting to go with this City Social concept here in Dubai? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, we want it to be, um, you know, the one in London. Uh, it, it has a Michelin star, but it's not your traditional Michelin star restaurant. It has a Michelin star in London for the quality of its food. Mm -hmm. um, as in, you know, an incredible be uh, beverage um, programme and so forth. And we sort of want to be able to do the same here. That's, that's for sure. You know, we've got to work extremely hard to make sure we, we keep consistent. Um, we want it to be absolutely one of the best restaurants in the city. And then we have another concept which opens up in September, mm -hmm. which I'm working on over the summer months. When everyone's going on holiday, I'll be here in the heat, <laughs> <laughs> toiling away, making sure we're ready for September. And uh, that's a, a, a gorgeous little... Uh, restaurants, so we're excited for that too. Wow. So that's sort of where we're going. That with it, really. sounds exciting. <laughs> but I know you've been in Dubai for quite some time now. How many years is that? Well, before anybody in this studio was probably even born, <laughs> <laughs> I I lived here from two. So I was Gordon Ramsay's exec chef many years ago mm -hmm. in my former life. So I got sent here in 2000 to open up there by Gordon Ramsay at the uh, in Deira. Yeah. And I left. I got. I met my wife here. I got married here at Jamalali. Wow. And then uh, I left 2005 um, to, tr to go back to London. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? I think it, it, what filled me with joy to be at the Michelin event on, on Tuesday was um, the reason why I, I, I absolutely love my time here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. It was the first time in my life I had friends outside of the culinary world. Uh, I learned to play golf. Mm -hmm. I, nice. had, I had many great friends here. But by not being, not being able to be judged as a chef. Mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. very difficult because it's, it's almost been like an athlete, right? Yeah. It's, it, you can train every day, but if you can't run a race, mm -hmm. you don't really know how good you are. Yeah. So we've, at the time, there was no, really, no, no real judging system here as you as a culinary talent. So you know, London came calling, so I went back to London for that reason. Then, you know, seven, eight months later, we opened up Maze by Gordon Ramsay and won the Michelin star. But to see now how Dubai has flourished mm. and watching all those young chefs going up on stage, a lot of homegrown talent, which is really satisfying for me to see um, international talent going up and collecting their Michelin stars. It was really amazing, nice. so oh. I was thrilled. Yeah. And you know, like you just mentioned, the Dubai scene has changed dramatically across all industries. But how does one, how does a chef, how does a restaurant, a group stay relevant and fresh for mm -hmm. the F&B scene? Hard work pays off, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, it, it, I'm sure, you know, everybody's heard that saying a million times. 
if you get complacent, if you sit still, if you think you've made it, all that will kill you, right? You've mm -hmm. just got to go to work every day. You've got to reinvent. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to keep pushing, keep challenging the status quo, and just, you know, be humble. Look at the environment around you. See why things are becoming relevant, and you don't have to follow trends. Like mm -hmm. when, when, you know, when, when, yeah. when, you, you, but you, but it's very important to understand why a trend's happening. Yeah. Right. Because it's a new generation forcing that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you take the best of that and try and interrupt your cuisine with it. Yeah. Speaking of trends, our spotlight for today is a renowned burger joint that has stolen the hearts of many. We interviewed the co-founder of Ugly Burger for our early celebration of International Burger Day happening this weekend. Take a look at this. Hi, my name is Eric Lee. I'm the co-founder and executive chef here at Ugly Burger. I'm originally from Hong Kong. Uh, but I grew up in the Netherlands and Germany for a brief time. Um, but most of my life I was in the UK. So Ugly Burger was actually a pandemic baby. We started it in April of 2020 during the lockdowns. Uh, we opened it as a cloud concept initially, but uh, after a while it, it got traction and then we grew the business into a physical space, firstly in Darawassel Mall for one year. And then now we're here in Nakhil Mall in Palm Jumeirah. So when we first started testing for Ugly Burger, uh, I was inside the Korean restaurant of one of the co-founders. Uh, basically, we didn't have any of the equipment to cook the burgers, so we started using the Korean pots and pans. And the first burger we ever made was basically very, very ugly. Uh, one of the co-founders, Chang, he sent the picture over to his wife, who was in Korea at the time. And the first thing that she said was, uh, that's a really ugly burger. So that name kind of stuck with us and we carried forward. I guess what makes Ugly Burger special is firstly, the Asian influence that we have for the flavors. Uh, we have items such as the shrimp katsu burger, the Korean fried chicken, the bulldog chicken burger, which was made famous by the spicy noodle challenge. And I guess also we source all of the ingredients very carefully. We use very premium products from our Angus beef, which is grinded in-house every single day, to the free-range, never frozen chicken thighs for our burgers. I would highly recommend trying our chicken burgers due to the fact that we've switched it up from using breasts, now we're using thighs, which make the burger much more juicier, much more tastier. Operating a food business in general is always a challenge. Uh, operating multiple food businesses at the same time is probably my biggest challenge at the moment, having to time manage, and then also staying ahead of the game and being relevant at all times in the market. It will stay relevant with our Asian influence. I believe that we can push the boundaries in a very flooded burger market right now. Uh, we plan to introduce more Asian flavors, more twists to the normal burgers that are available here in Dubai. Uh, and I see it growing as a business and expanding to other countries. Dubai is home. We moved here at the end of 2018. Um, it's a great place to live, it's safe, and the food scene right now is buzzing here in Dubai compared to five years ago. And I really wouldn't believe I could live anywhere else right now. I would probably start off with a very short gym session in the morning, followed by some breakfast. Uh, I love motorsports, so anything to do with racing, I'd love to do a day out in the desert on a dune buggy and then followed by a family day out at the beach and then probably just a very, very relaxing evening with some friends at night. Um, lots and lots of great food in between. Oh, definitely tucking into one of them very, very soon. But right now it is time for the daily roundup. Ahmed, what is buzzing in the city? 
Okay, so BuzzFeed has jumped onto the bandwagon of companies that are incorporating AI in their operations with the introduction of Botatui, an AI-operated application which can generate personalized recipes on the basis of the items stored in your fridge. <laughs> In Buzz, uh, BuzzFeed's Tasty app, users can have a real-time conversation with the chatbot, Batatui, by asking it cooking questions like, what recipes can I make with the ingredients that I have in my fridge, or how long should I cook the salmon? <laughs> what do you guys think about that? <laughs> what do you think, Jason? Oh, I mean, it, the world moves so quick, right? Mm -hmm. Today, we're in this world where things are just, it's, it's just insane. So I welcome technology. I think technology is, is an important part of where we're going as human beings. And as long as it doesn't cook it for you, yes. and you still come to our restaurant, yes. we exactly. cook that for you, but it's a step forward. Look, I think it's an industry that, I mean, no matter what, can't be touched by the AI mm -hmm. or the technology because it's the human touch that matters yeah. so much. It's the skills and expertise. And emotions. Exactly. The emotions, yes. the love and the passion behind yes. everything yeah. that you do. What do you think about it, Dan? I mean, I must admit, I've, I've used similar before, so I've been lazy and been on chat gpt and been like please can you write me a 1500 calorie list of recipes to have this week yeah and then you'll list it then you say please give me the shopping list for this and then i've just put it into the spinners app and amazing <laughs> it makes life a lot easier i guess does. but yeah. we'll still be going to the restaurants that's but for sure. do oh, you see yourself chef see using ai perhaps in the future I, no, I don't. No, <laughs> you know because 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 if you think about why you go to a holiday, right? It's really important that we're, uh, so holiday. Sorry, I was about to say, when you go to a restaurant, yes. we call it a mini holiday, right? Okay, so you yeah. escape your life. Mm. We do this in all our training, right? So you, you got those two, three hours in a restaurant where you escape your normal life. If that always becomes robotic, it takes away all of the pleasure of what a nice restaurant should give you as, as, as a dining. That's very true. So, so we, we, I don't think it will overtake our restaurant. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. <laughs> oh, you yeah. cannot be wrong. You're a Michelin star chef. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely but not. Thank you so much for your insights, Chef. It has been amazing having you here on the show. We look forward to having you here again sometime no, in the future. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Now, we will be right back after the break with insights on must-see movies this weekend from our very trusted sources at the cinema. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We promise to hook you up with the latest from the world of film. And our next guest today is here to do just that. Please welcome Murray Ray, Director of Operations of Proxy Cinemas. Thank you so much for joining us. No, it's my great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I love going to the cinemas. And, you know, with everything happening like Netflix and all the different platforms that we have, a lot of people, I guess, are not going to the cinemas as much. Do you see that shifting? Do you still see people going to the cinemas and enjoying the whole experience? Or do, are they shifting to just staying at home and chilling? No, uh, well, people are doing both, actually. Um, mm. And as you rightly point out, it's about the experience, yeah. right? So we grew up going to the cinema, you know, that feeling of entering the lobby, of smelling the popcorn, joining a queue, the anticipation of a blockbuster. Yeah. That will never be replaced by streaming services and sitting at home on your sofa. So cinema is here to stay, yeah. but it is now part of a mix. We can consume movies and content in many different ways. I mean, the cinema caters to literally everyone. Mm -hmm. It is there for everyone to go and enjoy, no matter what time of the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I love about it is there's always something new. I, I mean, a lot of people go for the big blockbusters to mm -hmm. go to the cinema, but I think it's the small indie movies as well yes. that people love to go and see. What can people look forward to? What is new right now in, in the cinema realm, and what are people watching? So we're, we're entering the summer blockbuster season, and uh, the month of May has been great to us. We've had Super Mario Brothers, we've had John Wick, and we're currently in the middle yes. of the Fast X release. But there's a lot still to come in June. Uh, releasing today is The Little Mermaid from Disney. Mm -hmm. We have The Flash and we have Spider-Man to look forward to in the month of June. And that will just roll us nicely into the summer. There's a lot coming up in the cinema. Yeah, I mean, such an exciting time. Louis, you went to go see Little Mermaid. I did. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to see the, the premiere Excellent. of The Little Mermaid, and, and I'm excited to watch it again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Uh, it looks absolutely stunning. It's a great movie. Now, 
Dan, I know you're a big foodie, but you love the cinema experience as well, don't you? I've actually got a cinema in my house. Do you really? Yeah. Someone's doing well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I built, I, well, yeah, like last uh, last winter we kind of built a, a, a cinema house. I've got a nice like 4K projector and a big surround sound, but I still do love going to the cinema because, as you mentioned, like the smell of the popcorn when you walk in. And I also believe that Roxy are doing a lot of good culinary things as well, so would you be able to tell us a little bit more about the food experiences that you've got as well? Yeah, no, thank you. We're very proud of our food in Beverage, actually, and we've put a lot of effort into uh, making sure that it can be the best that it is. We take a lot of inspiration from street food, actually, and we, nice. we look at um, what's happening in the street because people are eating with their hands in the street. Mm -hmm. They're um, very uh, curious about new flavours and textures, which fits what we're trying to do in the cinema very well. It adds to the experience. Now, food and beverage is now a massive part of going to the cinema, right? People don't just eat popcorn, they don't just drink Coca-Cola, they need a lot more from, from their visit to the cinema, so we put a lot of effort into making that mm. what it is. But other than the food, I know what you've also put a lot of effort in is the comfort of every person who's actually... Ahmed's nodding his <laughs> yes, head. He's like, I, I know totally what your favourite one that. is. <laughs> I know you've got special seats at Roxy Cinemas, right? We have. So if, if you were to visit us at um, Roxy Cinemas in Dubai Hills, you'll find a cinema where every single seat in the house is fully reclining. You know, backrest, footrest. The seats in Platinum, believe it or not, at the push of a button actually have a seat warmer. Um, in this region, you wouldn't think that you're ever going to need a seat warmer, but people <laughs> yes. often complain that cinemas are cold, so we, and we've um, solved that problem by putting a, a warmer into the seat, such as you'd find oh. in a luxury car. Oh, wow. Sign me up, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I also wanted to ask you, what is the process of you guys picking the movies, and what should you be showing here in the region? Okay, so the, the movies that are popular in this region, for the most part, are the same as they would be in other parts of the world. Yeah. What we have here is the, um, the benefit, if you like, where we've got uh, cultures crossing over, yes. so many cultures in the city. We have an environment where Hollywood movies are obviously very popular. We have local Arabic yeah. content, and then we have South Asian content such as Bollywood. So it's probably the only part of the world where you'd find those three genres of movie being equally popular it just doesn't happen anywhere else. True. Mm. Yeah. I mean, such an array, like you said. Spider-Man is a movie that you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. I mean, that is one of the main blockbuster mm. kind of events that people really, really look forward to. Let's also take a look at it, because mm. it is just a great cast. It's a great mm -hmm. cinematic experience mm -hmm. for I'm everyone. One and only Spider-Man. And things are going great. Oh, yeah. So are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the spot. <laughs> That's not funny. Don't, don't do that. Miles's grades are pretty good. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. Oh, a huge box office hit, which I'm sure everyone is going to take to the cinemas for. Uh, Murray, last question. Is mm. there a season anymore when it comes to movies? Is there a movie season or is it just all year round now? Uh, there is still a season. Okay. Uh, we're, we're somewhat... Um guided by what's happening in the United States and Europe, so very much there is a summer season. As we've seen, that started at the beginning of May, will take us through till August. Then we have a bit of a lull, and then we have the Christmas and New Year releases. So it is a cyclical um, business that's seasonal. It's also driven by the awards season. Mm -hmm. It's important uh, at what time of year movies are released so they can get consideration for Academy Awards and, and the other awards that are associated with our industry. Mm, well, so much to look forward to for the rest yes. of the year. Murray, thank you so much You're for your welcome. time. And we'll be going to Oxy Cinema this week, I think. Yes. I hope so. We we'll <laughs> look forward to welcoming thank you. Thank you, Murray. Well, I'm sure Dan was paying a lot of attention to everything that Murray has been saying and with what Chef has been saying earlier. It is time to test your knowledge with our DXV wow. in 60. Oh, Are you ready or could you be ready, Dan? Uh, let's go for it. Well, we're going to start the timer now in three, two, one. One first question: What was the topic of today's show? Michelin tires or Michelin stars? Michelin stars. Very good. Which chef and restaurateur was a guest on the show today? Jason Atherton or Gordon Ramsay? A tough one, but I think <laughs> it was Jason. That's correct. Who was a friend from the show reporting from the Michelin Awards? Was it Dan Fay or Millie Midwood? Oh, it was definitely Millie, yeah. She, she's brilliant as well. <laughs> and, the, of course, the answer was Dan Faye. The DXB Today Spotlight was on A, Beautiful Burger, or B, Ugly Burger. Ugly Burger. Mm -hmm. 
Which day did we celebrate in advance on the show today? Is it A, International Shawarma Day or B, International Burger Day? International Burger Day. This is too easy for you. <laughs> what is uh, the international or when is the Bur International Burger Day celebrated? 28th May or 29th May? Oof, I think it's 28th May. That is correct again. <laughs> Last one, our second guest on the show today, Marie Ray, is the Director of Operations at A, A Roxy Cinemas or 20th Century Fox? Roxy Cinemas, of course. <laughs> Roxy <laughs> Cinemas is correct. Well oh my done. goodness, you got everything you got right. Everything that is seven out of right. seven. Well done, Dan. I'm sure I'm you're joining. Attention. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's See, you did you a good job. You do something good today. <laughs> uh, Dan, it's an leaderboard. absolute pleasure. Look at you. Uh, you are there on the leaderboard. Uh, it wasn't enough to get to the top, but we appreciate the effort, Dan. So thank you so much for joining us. And Murray, once again, thank you for being here. Dan, it's been an absolute pleasure. We hope you'll join us back. Absolutely, if you yeah. like me. Imagine if he said no, that would be really good. <laughs> right, we'll be back with some Motown tunes very soon, so don't miss it. Welcome back to DXB Today. We've been talking about food, we've been talking about movies, then of course, naturally, we got to talk about music as well. Joining me today, Shinwa Hawk. Did I say that right? You Shinwa did. Hawk. You said it perfectly. Perfect. So I know you are not just a musician, you are also a singer, a VO artist, and an author as yes, well yes. to add to your list of uh, things that you can do. So tell me, you've written a new book. Yes, so I, I released my first children's book. Uh, it's called Mr. Broomley's Winter's Nap. And oh. yeah, it's, it's a cute little story about a little bear. He's, he's trying to take his nap for the winter, and someone keeps knocking on his door, and he's trying to figure out who keeps knocking on his door and waking him up. So the book is about the adventure he goes on trying to figure out who's knocking on his door. Oh, that's so, so cute. What, what inspired this? Do you have a kid of your own? I or? don't have any kids, but I have 27 nieces and nephews. Oh, there you go. So I'm always making up stories and doing little voices for them. So so I wanted to create something that I thought they would enjoy. That's beautiful. Yes. And uh, what about with music? Do you create music for your nieces and nephews as well? You know, I, I, I used to make up little songs for them when, when some of them were little babies. Um, but m most of my music is for adults. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now, just going back to your name, Xinhua Hawk, yes. I, I'm just really curious. Um, does it mean anything? Yes, it means God's blessing. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. And of course, you're going to bless us with your music today. Tell us a little bit more about the sound that you have. What is what is Xinhua Hawk's music? So, so my music is, I like to call it acoustic soul um, because it's a mix of so many genres, pop, soul, R&B, um, and uh, guitar is my favorite instrument, so my friend Josh is here to, to, to help us out today. But um, yeah, it's just a mix of a bunch of different genres, so um, yeah, I just mix it all up and try to make people happy. And how long have you been performing here in the UAE? I've been performing here on and off, I guess for the last uh, four years. So this is my fourth trip here, so I'm usually here for a good six months, and. Then I'm back home for a little while and then back again, so. Well, we hope yeah. to have you a little bit more here in Dubai then. Yes, I plan on staying. <laughs> well, I'll let you guys get ready, but now it's back to Ahmed. Yes, indeed, Louis, I have an announcement. We are announcing the winner of this week's competition of the four director box tickets to see Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse at Roxy Cinemas. And drum roll, please. Mm -hmm. The winner is Maria Sebastian. Congratulations. Yes, congrats, Maria. And of course, we are still giving away a free spot in the ChatGPT Accelerator program that is taking place on the 3rd and the 4th of June. It is worth 4,200 dirhams. So, this weekend is literally your last chance to win this. So if AI is definitely something that intrigues you, make sure that you find that post to tell us why you should win. And of course, we would just love to hear from you. So use the hashtag DXB today if you're watching the show and send us a selfie from wherever you are just to say hello. <laughs> what a great show this yes. has been. I mean, we've touched on all of our favorite things, food, cinema. Yes. And what has been your favorite part so far? I mean, I know you are heading to London very soon. Yes, so, so You'll be... food for sure. I'm going to be going to <laughs> Chef Jason's restaurants just to try out all the different experiences that he was talking about. Because mm -hmm. I think it's just fascinating that you would go and it's just a journey. It's not just going, sitting at a restaurant and eating food and leaving. Mm -hmm. It's the whole experience of walking in, trying all the different uh, courses that they offer. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, 
enjoying your time with your friends. Mm. I, I love that you touched on that because I think a good time at a restaurant is not just about the dish itself. Yes, exactly. It's an entire experience. Yeah. And, and of course, the, the people behind the restaurant always have to put that top of mind. It's not just what's on the plate, yeah. right? Mm, absolutely. I mean, being there at the Michelin Guide ceremony really... I don't know, I felt kind of ignorant to the industry before. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the serious, uh, you know, importance yes. of such a movement. And for chefs, you know, they really work their whole lives for it. So it's just beautiful. It, am I going to get in the kitchen? Absolutely not. I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, do you? Really yeah, I do. do, I, do I cook at home. Yeah. Wow, OK, dinner at Ahmed. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Very, very soon. It's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. What a fun episode. But that is it from us. So have a lovely weekend and we will see you at the same time next week. Over to you, Shinwa Hawk. Baby, baby, I'm aware of where you go. Each time you leave my door, I watch you walk down the street, knowing that you don't belong to me. Stop in the name of love before you break my heart stop nothing you could do could make me be untrue to my girl nothing you could buy could make me tell a lie to my girl I'm sticking to my girl like a stamp to a letter Like birds of a feather we stick together I'm telling you from the start I can't be torn apart from my girl Let the music play on all night long.